Uh, the sun has set. <laughs> it is dark outside. Uh, thank you to uh, the, the panel, obviously, for staying, and to the colleagues at the back who stayed. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, we're here to talk to you about our proposal, a type 3 pro proposal, which is uh, not very snappily entitled, I would have to say, enhancing the digital teaching capabilities of experienced online instructors and the digital learning capabilities of their students. I've listened to some of the other uh, project teams that have their gorgeous acronyms, A-I-T-E-A, -E and I wish we had come up with something snappier. Um, but this is coming from, I suppose, our experience um, of delivering a wholly online course. So Teresa and I have been involved in uh, uh, an online program at Trinity, uh, the Postgraduate Diploma in Social Policy and Practice, um, which is delivered wholly online. It's a, a, a one-year postgraduate program delivered, I suppose, really quite intensively over a year with six modules. Um, we take two classes a year. This is one of those classes graduating. And I think that experience, which is part of Trinity's strategy to go online, part of the 2014 strategy to go online, um, has developed, I suppose, among our staff, um, a very intensive acquisition of knowledge and skill. Uh, very much focused on how do I get my materials online? How do I facilitate my students' engagement? And I think what we now have would be quite a tech technically skilled group of instructors who are also, I think, actually quite good at the um, design and development elements of the curriculum. We've been through that experience. We also have a, a very good set of established supports, I would say, um, in no small part to Teresa, supporting students. This is part of the centralised support unit where all of our students have access to that technical support. Um, and that, I suppose, has been really where our focus has been, in getting online, in going online, and in acquiring those technical skills. But I think it's fair to say that that's really only one part of the picture. And if I'm to look at the all aboard map of the digital skills, mapping those in Irish higher education, I have to say I think we've probably been quite focused on some of the tracks in this lovely map. Probably very focused on things like tools and technologies, certainly focused on creating and innovating. But one of the things I suppose now um, our experience of, of running that program has brought us to is to realise that for us and for our students it's certainly a lot more than simply um, the technology. It's not just about design and development. And good design and development of digital resources does not make necessarily for a good, rich, vibrant digital learning experience. Um, and that's where we are now. We're realising, I suppose, at this point in our experience, uh, we have four, four cohorts of students graduated. We're now in our fifth year. But actually, uh, really for us, there's a growing need, I think, for students and instructors to focus more on the, I suppose, the interaction within the classroom. What is going on within the classroom that is, um, I suppose, important? So that live part of the online course is something we're beginning to reflect on now. And we're reflecting on that, I suppose, guided by, you know, despite how obvious it might seem, I think for a while we probably thought that online learning was simply replicating what you might do in a face-to-face -face environment. And the truth is, of course, that it's not, that it requires new ways of teaching and new ways of learning. And it's taken us a while, I suppose, to get to the point where we're beginning to ask, okay, well, what is it we need to be doing in the classroom that will stimulate that debate, that will get students to engage with each other? Now, I think that's probably of particular importance to us because of the programme. The programme is a programme in social policy and practice. We have a lot of people coming to us from the world of, of social services, people who run services and manage them. We have people coming to us from the community and the voluntary sector who are advocating for social change and who want an understanding of the bigger social policy picture to make that change happen. We also, actually, some years, have people coming from the corporate sector who want to learn a little bit more about social things to fulfill their corporate social responsibility. What that means is that we have a melting pot of people from all kinds of different backgrounds. Some of our students are operating with English, certainly not as their first language. And yet, in order for them to achieve le learning outcomes at level nine on a social policy program, they need to be able to discuss and debate with each other in a very robust way. So how do we make that happen? How do we make sure that when the course goes live, that the discussion forum certainly is live, interactive, vibrant. And how do we make sure that the tutorials we use, we have synchronous tutorials once a week. Uh, on a Thursday evening, uh, the students would come together, um, enhanced with webcam and microphone, and, and we talk as a class with each other, 
we debate and we engage. So in that environment, I suppose one of our experiences, and this is a, a, I mean a, very, a very local project, arises from very local need, uh, one of the things that we can see can happen is that when the classroom isn't vibrant, it is, I suppose, a natural instinct for instructors perhaps to move into didactic mode and start teaching and filling the space where maybe they're wanting discussion to happen. Um, the same can happen, I suppose, in the reverse, talking earlier with colleagues from DCU, that sometimes in the synchronous tutorial, if a student does speak up and they start to dominate the discussion, you're almost so delighted that they're talking, you leave them at it, you know, perhaps for longer than you should. So trying to figure out, I suppose, what's the right balance, how to promote that engagement, how to make it safe for students to share with each other, and often in social policy to argue with each other about what social policy uh, might be the correct response to a, a social problem. Uh, we think we need some new ways of teaching and learning on this program. Um, we think we need to be spending a little more time thinking about the roles that teachers and learners play in the classroom. A little more time thinking about the behaviours, the teaching and learning behaviours. So not just thinking about the material, not just thinking about the stuff, but thinking about how, once you've made that available, how do you um, um, signal to people, how do you build the right kinds of behaviours, the right actions, and the right attitudes in the class, so that what you're building is, I suppose, the competence, but also the comfort and the confidence for that classroom to be vibrant. And um, so this is uh, what we reckon our need uh, is. And we have an opportunity now, because we've been running this course since 2014. We have four graduated cohorts of students, and one currently um, um, uh, in line, actually having classes and uh, synchronous tutorials this evening. And one of the things we'd like to do is we'd like to go and, uh, and, and find out what those students thought about the experience they had online. We'd like to find out from their perspective what were the digital learning behaviours that they thought were good for them, that were good practice from them. What were the digital teaching practices that they liked? So we've done variants of this in very small scale surveys before. So we know, for example, that students really like it in the digital classroom when the instructor calls on somebody to contribute, but they don't like it when it's them that's called. Okay. So we know, therefore, that there's something that works when you pull somebody out of the group, but there's some barrier, some attitude resistance, perhaps, from the individual's perspective. We also know from having conducted, uh, we've tried a, a few approaches, for example, in the discussion forum. So, in, you know, one year, for example, we decided to comment on every single post on the discussion forum. Okay? Every single thing that was posted to see what that would do. And not only was that a, 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 fairly, <laughs> a fairly significant endeavor from a time perspective, we could also see that actually it encouraged a very unilateral conversation between the instructor and the students. And that actually, when a course goes live, we need to step out of it a little to allow the students to connect with each other. But some of this learning, to be honest, is a little ad hoc. Some of it comes from you know, what we have done of, of some of our annual evaluations of materials. Some of it comes from discussions between the instructors themselves. What we'd like to do is to really get a good grasp now on the student opinions of digital learning, digital teaching, their experience, what was good, and what do they think is needed. We'd like to do a survey with these students. We already have a survey plan for this year, a destination survey. We'd like to add in some digital teaching and digital learning questions into it. We'd like the students who respond to that survey to indicate whether they're willing to participate in a focus group, and that's something that we will conduct online using the same methodology, the same technology that we use um, uh, generally uh, to support um, uh, uh, the, the course itself. What we hope we will get out of that, as well as with some interviews with our instructors, we want to develop some additional artifacts, some two new teaching and learning sessions. We already have quite a good suite of resources for our, our, our students and for our lecturers, but we think it needs to be enhanced. And we think with some um, uh, online uh, resources that we can add into the induction um, sessions that we can support a shared understanding between lecturers and between the students of the kinds of roles that people might be playing in a digital environment and the kinds of behaviours actions and attitudes that, I suppose, foster a good, rich environment. 
we think that this will allow for deeper learning experience for, for our students. Um, and we think it, it will capture something that's happening on quite an ad hoc basis at the moment. A lot of our instructors, we talk regularly about what's the best way to get a classroom going, perhaps when it has slowed down. We think we could do with formalising some of that and certainly locating it within an evidence base. Now, if we can get the student voice activated, one of the potentials, of course, is for us to use it even more. And this is uh, based on the comments from the panel. We think that there's the opportunity, certainly for us, in engaging with students in this way, to get them to reflect a little on the meta skills of, 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 of learning digitally, for them to think about how they're learning. And not just as many, most of them are busy people, they all have jobs, many of them have families and caring responsibilities, to zoom out a little and to think about those meta skills. We also think that this would be a way for us to get some qualitative input into an evaluation of the curriculum going forward. So we evaluate the curriculum at the moment in a fairly standard way using evaluations, um, uh, survey based. It would be really good if we could get um, a solid group of students who are willing to give us feedback on our curriculum on an ongoing basis. So if this was to work for this project, um, it would be something that we could hook on and use for further, um, further um, improvements to what we do. So how do we plan to go about doing this? This is, uh, this is the idea we have in mind. So we'd like to obviously have a look at the evidence base. We know there's some evidence there. We haven't been looking at it in a very concrete way or a very focused way to look at it, particularly to look at what's out there with regard to the roles that people can play in an online environment. So we can see, for example, that some of the students very clearly play um, a supporting role for other students. So very often they'll help students find where resources might be online. And that's a role you know, that they're playing. Sometimes they're playing a display role where they're letting you know what they know and their post is very much a performance rather than in any way engaging with anybody else in their class. So we like to have a look at the evidence base. Then we'd like to try and capture the student voice through a survey distributed to our five cohorts of students. Uh, that would give us about, that's about 200 students um, since we've started. And then from that to uh, work further with some of those students in focus groups. We also want to use our instructor group. Um, we're, we're, we're fortunate, we, we have a, a mainly full-time instructor base in Trinity. This program is staffed um, with, with full-time lecturers. Uh, we meet each other uh, regularly as a course committee to use those inputs in group and also in individual um, formats. And then to develop, as I say, these two artifacts, an online session on digital learning and one on digital um, teaching. This is the outline of the project plan. Um, uh, uh, over the year, we really would like to get these materials ready for the next start of the program, which would be here in September. Okay. So that means we would be starting the secondary research phase uh, there in January and starting primary research towards the middle of February. Now we've already received ethical approval for a destination survey, so we've a little bit of work to, done there already. So we would be able, I think, to go back and look for some revised ethical approval in order to add these additional elements to the project. Then, um, after we have uh, engaged in the survey and the focus groups with students, the interviews with lecturers, to analyse what's coming out um, you know, what are people who have been doing this kind of learning in a wholly uh, digital environment, what are they saying are some of the things that work for them, the behaviours and the actions that they associate with a good learning experience. Then we look to develop these materials, and I'll talk about the team in a moment, to develop those materials um, uh, for online uh, implementation. And then what we'd like to do is to test those materials. We always have a testing phase anyway. We'd like to use our student focus group to give us some feedback on some of the elements of our, um, uh, of our um, program. Uh, the team um, basically uh, is a team that works together already quite a bit. Myself and Teresa and our colleagues in Trinity Online Services work together on a weekly basis to deliver online sessions for this program and for others. Uh, we would also see um, uh, a role, for, obviously, for a research assistant here to assist us with primary uh, collection. And also we have uh, an, a predefined group of students and instructors that we will be able and hope that we would be able to access. I think one of the things that this would do would be it would add to the existing digital skill resources that we certainly have available to us. It would supplement them and complement them. Um, it's something that I think when it's an online format, as I think many of the groups here today have said, it facilitates that national sharing. Um, definitely for those of us involved in teaching, this 
supports your professional development, I think. Um, and it's a way of researching what you're teaching and, and then teaching you know, what you've researched. It's that lo lovely virtuous cycle, putting the students at the centre of that evaluation um, of, of what works. Um, we think for students and also for instructors, it will facilitate that meta-analysis. And really, ultimately, though, we'll know if it's working. Uh, I mean, the, that sustainability in terms of impact. Um, will we see in our classrooms more competence in terms of participation in class? Will we see greater confidence and comfort? And I think then we'll see whether it has facilitated a vibrant digital classroom. That's our proposal. Thank you very much. I'm going to Thank stop you. now <laughs> and take questions from the panel. Okay,